Hi, I'm Alice Jones and welcome to my Tiny Blue Room concert. Enormous thank you to the Flute Center of New York for sharing this recital. Um, here you're going to see me, well, in my home, wearing some of my favorite dresses with my grandfather, with a clown, <laughs> one, of, one of my dad's paintings, and sharing some music with you. This program alternates between pieces that are my musical comfort food and pieces that are really quite new to me. In the long 2020, which is how I'm thinking of the last 14 months, really nothing else will do. I either need to be swaddled in something familiar <laughs> or I need to be forging ahead into uncharted territory. The first piece is a piece that I actually wake up dreaming about. Sharish Corday's Anusvara for bass flute and alto flute is written in the style of an alap or the opening improvisatory and meditative section of a raga. I met Sharish in 2009 when I reached out to him to learn more about another one of his really fantastic flute solos, Tenderness of Cranes, and I have just loved playing his music ever since. Anusvara means after sound in Sanskrit, and the piece is really a sonic meditation on the pitches of this rag. Thank you. 
These next two works are much newer to me by a couple of really fantastic 20th century American Black composers. So this is going to be Ulysses K's Prelude and Coleridge Taylor Perkinson's Sonata a la Baroque. Um, both of these works are really satisfying to play in the same way that so much solo flute repertoire from the Baroque period is satisfying. They've got really um, interesting formal structures and thoughtful departure and return to the same pitches, really squirrely motives and playful working within and against the written meter. Enjoy. Thank you. 
Okay, back to comfort. Toru Takamitsu's Itinerant is perhaps the very first piece that I ever played where I realized that playing it didn't feel like work. It was just the joy of making sound, of noticing how a sound changes and how silence moves in and out of the flute. The irony of playing a piece whose title is about traveling or journeying in the middle of a year in which neither is possible is not lost on me. And so I'm trying to find comfort in the power of the emotional or metaphysical journey that the work also implies as we travel from one emotional state to another or one phase in our life to another.
The next piece is Valerie Coleman's Danza de la Mariposa, or Dance of the Butterfly. And this is another source of joy and comfort for me because this piece is joyful to the max and it is grooving. Um, and I think Valerie once told me that it's kind of like a butterfly on acid. So what is not to love? <laughs>
These next two pieces worked their way into my repertoire in the past year, actually because of my students. So I first came across Brian Raphael Neighbors' excellent alto flute solo just last month while I was researching composers for my flute students, and I'm really happy to know this piece. The theme travels through nine variations, journeying through the entire range of sounds on the alto, so different dynamics, different registers, extended techniques, before closing with the theme again.
So this is actually almost the newest piece on the program. I commissioned Kimberly Osberg to write a work for my students in Juilliard's Music Advancement Program last March when I saw her post about her micro commissioning project on Twitter. My flute studio had been in the middle of exploring tone colors and they just professed their love for seventh chords and then the pandemic shut everything down in New York City. So those two points of inspiration led to this particular piece. The piece is structured around the Roy G. Biv color spectrum, and it starts with red, makes its way through orange, yellow, green, blue, and it finishes with purple. Actually, it finishes on the same pitch that the whole piece started on, so I guess you could play it in a whole infinite color spectrum loop. Thank you to Quanasia and Kenya and Diego Lucy, Namia, and Anaya for bringing this work to life. And I'm so happy to share it with all of you. Kimberly's commissions from quarantine, of which there are 40 different fantastic pieces, are all now available for free on her website, KimberlyOsberg.com.
So this is the last piece on the program. And this one for me is, I guess, both highly comfortable and also highly new territory for me. That's really what being a composer means in my life at this point. I wrote this piece or this set of pieces in June 2020, not because I thought of myself as a composer at that point, but because I just didn't know what else to do with myself. Um, each day I would take my flute out and I would do my long tones and my scales and maybe play an etude. And then I didn't know what else to play. You might have seen in some of these videos that there's a, a bookshelf here in this tiny blue room and it's full of sheet music. And I would look at all that music every day and I couldn't bring myself to play it because I was not sure at that moment that we would ever get to do concerts again. And I couldn't bring myself to committing to practicing something at that point. It's just not the headspace that I was in. And so instead, every single day I was improvising. Sometimes I was improvising well, and some of it was very bad, but <laughs> uh, some of it turned into these four pieces that I called Tiny Efforts 2020, because tiny efforts is all I could manage. Instead of performing these pieces outright in June 2020, I decided to try a little social media experiment instead. So I took the pieces that I'd written, I put them on my website in every clef, and I put them there for free posted about it on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook. And I said, look, if you play this, I will send you some of my stimulus check because I was lucky enough to still be teaching and working and I knew that so many of my musical colleagues were not in that same position. And, oh my gosh, the response was so cool. Like the world, <laughs> the world is full of such amazing, beautiful, talented, skillful, inventive musicians. And I'm so happy to know so many more of them as a result of this, because these pieces were played all over the world, uh, and people on uh, steel pan drums and viola and trombone and saxophone and flute and <laughs> piano and guitar. Oh my goodness, it's really fantastic. I'm performing them here this is the first time I'm performing the whole set of them, and I'm doing them in the order that I wrote them. So it's going to start with Sun Shower, which is kind of Toro Takamitsu meets Philip Glass. <laughs> the title of the piece comes from the weather phenomenon where it might be raining and the sun is shining at the same time. The second piece is Star Water Taffy, and that for me is the sense of elastic, peaceful joy that I get looking up at the expanse of stars in the night sky. The bigness, the stretchiness, and also how small you are in that moment. The third piece is called Shadow Boxing. And I guess this is the angriest one of the set because it really refers to or was inspired by that sense of gnawing frustration that that I was feeling during the summer of 2020 and that I continue to feel when I think about the fact that we are on this inescapable merry-go-round of each generation over and over again confronting the same problems and struggles that the previous generation did. So when I think about the sense of uplift and joy that I was feeling at Black Lives Matter protests during the summer of 2020, it's tempered by the fact that we were having that same conversation in 2014 following the death of Eric Gardner and that I grew up hearing that same conversation and I know that my parents' generation and their parents' generation had this same conversation over and over again. The very last work in the set is one that, very similar to Sharish Corday's piece that opened this whole program, it's one that I wake up dreaming about. The title of it comes from an African-American folktale um, that I read in a collection of stories by Virginia Hamilton of the same name when I was a child. It's called The People Could Fly. And in this story, a group of enslaved Africans in the southern United States are able to escape slavery by remembering their ancestral ability to walk on the air. It is perhaps the most powerful image I can think of, and I'm honored to share it with you.
in hopes that we might all have that same kind of uplift in our lives. These works from Tiny Efforts 2020 and the new companion set, Tiny Efforts 2021, that I published in January are all available for free and playable on any instrument and in any clef on my website, alicehjones.com. I hope you enjoy and thank you so much for tuning in.
Thank you. 